Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to write custom functions in Python using some of the control flow statements we learned in the previous lesson. Now, functions built into Python and its libraries can take you a long way. You can do quite a bit in data analytics and data science using functions in, say, NumPy, Pandas, and some of the other machine learning libraries without ever actually having to write your own custom code. But the ability to write your own user-defined functions will give you the flexibility to handle situations where these sorts of pre-made tools aren't able to solve the problems that you're dealing with. So I'll start by learning how to define new functions in Python. To do that, you start with the def keyword. So this is saying define a new function. Then you write the name of the function after that with a space between it. We're going to call this one my function. After the function name, you have parentheses. And within the parentheses, you specify all the different arguments that the function has to take and operate on. That's what argument one comma argument two are here. Then the colon ends the definition line statement here. And everything that comes after the colon on the next indented line is the code body that is going to run within the function. So within the code body, you can put all sorts of different control flow statements and calculations, but ultimately the purpose of a function is to take some input values, in this case, arg1 and arg2, and to produce either some result or some output. And if you are producing output from a function, you want to return those output values. So after the function is run on the inputs, you can get something back and then do something with the output. To produce output from a function, you use the return keyword. So here in this function, we're just going to return the sum of the two arguments. So arg1 plus arg2. So all this function right here, my function does, is it takes two arguments, adds them up, and then returns the result. So this is, of course, a trivial function because we don't need to write a custom function to just add two numbers. That's something we can do just with the plus operator. But this is just an example of how you could structure a very simple function. Now, after defining a function, you can then call it using the name that you created and then pass arguments into the function and it will return results based on its internal logic. So we can show an example of that here. Now that we have my function, and I run that below, we can invoke or call my function on some inputs and it will perform whatever the function does. In this case, it just adds two things. So if we run my function on these arguments five and 10, it should just add those together and then return it. So when I run this, the console should say 15, which it does. So we successfully created a function that adds two numbers. Now you can also give default values two arguments in a function, which allows you to call the function without having to specify those arguments if you just want to use the defaults. So we'll show how to do that by showing a new function here. This new function is going to be similar to the last one, except we're going to add up three items this time. So we're going to say def, we'll give it a new name, some three items. The first three arguments are just going to be the numbers we're going to add, so we'll call them x, y, and z. And then we'll have a final argument, print args, and we're going to give this a default value. To do that, we say print args, and then we say equals whatever the default value is. And in this case, it'll be false. So when we run this function, it'll have this default of print args equals false. Then within the function body, all the function is going to do is if the print args argument is true, then it's going to print the arguments. If it's not true, it will basically skip this print and then just return the sum of x, y, and z. So if we then run this to define the function, and now we use the function, so let's sum up these three items, 5, 10, and 20. This should give us a result of 35. And since the print args default is false, we will not see the arguments printed. We will just see the result or the return value. So we see 35 here. Now, if we call the function again, but we override the default value here from false print args false to true by passing true into the fourth position we will both print the arguments out and then see the return value so if we run that you can see first the arguments are printed and then the result is returned too 
In addition to explicitly defined arguments that a function has to take, you can also set up functions so that they can accept any number of named or unnamed arguments. To accept extra unnamed arguments, you can use the star args argument within the list for the function arguments. So we'll give an example here. We're gonna define a new function called sum many args. What this is going to do is take any number of arguments and sum all of them together. So to do that, instead of explicitly stating x, y, z, etc., and adding them up. Well, we don't know how many arguments are going to be passed in. So instead of doing that, we'll just say star args, which means accept any number of unnamed arguments. And then the function body is going to print the type of the arguments. And the result or the return is going to be the sum of all the arguments. So let's just define this and then run it on these five values to see what the result is. And as you can see, when you pass in multiple arguments in this fashion through star args, it is passed into the function as a tuple. That's where the type class tuple comes in. And then within the function body, all of the arguments we passed in are accessible in that args tuple. Since sum is a function that works on tuples, we could just run sum on the arguments and then return it. You can also set up a function to accept additional named arguments by putting in star star kw args or keyword args into the argument list. And this will allow those keyword arguments to be accessible within the function as a dictionary. So we'll show an example of how to do that here. We're going to define a new function called sum keywords. And instead of star args, we're going to say star star kw args. So we're going to take these as keyword arguments. Keyword arguments just means the arguments are each going to be given a name instead of just passing in raw data values like we did in the last example. So here again, we're going to print the type of keyword args to confirm that it is passed in as a dictionary. And then to add these up, since we're dealing with a dictionary, sum doesn't work directly on a dictionary because a dictionary consists of key value pairs where the keys are gonna be these keywords and then the arguments or values themselves are what comes after the equal sign, the values associated with them. So we want to run sum on the values of the dictionary, not the keys. So we're gonna say keyword arguments dot values and then we'll sum that and return it. So this will essentially do the exact same thing as the previous function, except that the values we pass in are going to be named arguments instead of just raw values. So after defining this function, we can then run it and supply it with some keyword arguments that we want to add up. So we'll say my num or my number is going to equal 100, your number equals 200. And this function will add those together. The result should be 300. But we also see that the keyword arguments themselves are of class dictionary. Now, if you're writing a function that you or someone else is planning to use in the future, it can be useful to supply some documentation that explains how the function works so that it can be used without having to actually read all of the code and understanding all of the code within the function. So this is just an example of some basic documentation that helps make it clear how a function works. So here we're going to define a new function that calculates root mean squared error. You don't have to worry about what that is. It's just an error metric that is used in data analytics. The important part is that we're going to be providing some documentation for what this function is doing. First, we're just going to import NumPy as NP because the function is going to use some NumPy methods. Then we're going to use our def statement to define the function. We're going to call it RMSE for root mean squared error. We're going to take two inputs, predicted and targets. And now right beneath the function definition is a good place to provide some documentation before actually writing any code. And to do that, you can use a multi-line string. To make a multi-line string, you just use three quotes opening and three quotes closing. And then everything you put between that becomes a string. And within this multi-line string of documentation, we're just going to provide three things that are useful for the user of this function to know. First, we're going to have a brief statement about what the function does. So computes the root mean squared error of two NumPy ND arrays. 
And then we're going to provide a little information on both the arguments or the inputs and the return value or the outputs. So we're going to say the arguments predicted should be an ND array of predictions. Targets should be an ND array of target values. And the return value will be the root mean squared error as a float. So this document string tells us pretty much everything we need to know about what this function does, the types of inputs it takes, and the output value, without actually having to understand the internal logic and calculations in the code. You can see this return value looks a little bit hairy here, and it might be hard to understand what it's doing. We see np.square root, np.mean, some subtraction and exponentiation happening with a bunch of nested parentheses. Like this isn't that easy to just directly understand, but if we can read the doc string and know what it's supposed to do, what the arguments are and the return value, we don't really care about the internals here as long as the function actually works. So for the most part, when you're using functions, for instance, from libraries and packages, those have been used and tested enough by other people that we can be pretty confident that they actually work. And then reading documentation like this is all we really need to do to be able to figure out how it works and use it productively without having to read through a bunch of potentially complicated code. So to close out this lesson, we're also going to learn about Lambda functions in Python. Named functions like the ones we've been learning about are great for code that you're going to reuse several times. But sometimes you might want to write a simple function that you really are only going to need to use once. Python provides a shorthand way for creating functions that let you define unnamed or anonymous functions called lambda functions, which are typically used in situations where you only plan to use the function once in your code and you don't need to remember a name to reuse it later. The syntax for a lambda function looks like this. First you write lambda, then you write whatever arguments the function is going to take. So this is lambda function is going to take two arguments, x, comma, and y. Then you write a colon, and that is essentially the similar to the def line in our other function definitions. This defines the function and its inputs. And then after the colon, you just write whatever the function is going to return. So this lambda function is going to return the sum of the two inputs, x and y. So this lambda function is actually exactly the same as the first function that sums two values we learned about earlier. It's just a bit more concise and doesn't come with any kind of name that we're going to be able to reuse. You can assign a name to a lambda function if you want to by essentially just setting a variable equal to the lambda function. So we'll show how to do that below. If we wanted to give a name to a lambda function, we could say, my function two equals and then the whole lambda function. So in this case, we're just using the same one above. And then after we make this definition, we can then call the lambda function just like we did with our other named functions. So if we run this, it'll just sum these two values. Although you can assign a name to a lambda function doing this, that's not really what their purpose is. You should actually probably not be doing that because the whole point of a lambda function is that they're anonymous and then you can use them in situations where you don't need or want to supply a full name. You would mainly use a lambda function in situations where you need to create an un unnamed function on the fly, such as when you're using functions that require other functions as input. For instance, let's consider the Python built-in function map. Map takes a function and then an iterable like a list and applies the function to every single item within that iterable. So in this case, the argument that's the function to map is something that we could use a lambda function for because if we're just trying to map something onto an iterable one time, we wouldn't necessarily want to define a whole named function for that. So we'll give an example of how we could do that below. First, we're going to define a function that squares its input. So we'll say definition square of x and return x to the second power. And now we're going to map this function onto a list using map. So here we're going to say my map equals map. The first argument is the function we're mapping. So we're going to map our new function just to find square. The second argument are the values. So we're going to apply this square function to this list of values. 
Finally, once we create that map, we're just going to loop through and for each item in the resulting map, we're going to print it. So this should print a list of all of these items, but each one being squared. So let's do that and see what the result is. So you'll notice that in this example, we actually did the full definition of square X. We could have done this with the Lambda function and gotten rid of this whole definition by passing the Lambda function straight into map. So we'll show how we would do that. So instead of defining a whole extra function, we could have just said my map equals map. And then for the first argument, just pass in a Lambda function. So we'll say Lambda X and the return value is X squared. So this is the exact same function as the one up here. It has the same result, except in this case, we were able to define it on the fly within the argument for map. And then again, we'll run it on these five numbers and it'll produce the exact same results. But this allowed us to do it with a bit less code and in a way where we're not creating a function definition and a function name that we may not need to access later. So to wrap up, built-in Python functions, both in base Python and its packages, can take you a very long way in data analysis. You might even be able to complete some projects without even writing your own custom code and functions. But sometimes you will need to do that, and it's good to be able to do it if you need to. Now, up until now in this guide, when we've been working with lists and dictionaries, we've been explicitly writing out every single value that's going to go into those. That can be a tedious process, especially when you're trying to populate lists and dictionaries that are larger than just a few values. So in our final lesson covering Python programming constructs, we're going to go over several miscellaneous Python functions and conveniences with particular attention being given to list and dictionary comprehensions, which are easy and convenient ways of populating lists and dictionaries with data without having to write out explicit for loops. If you found this video useful, drop a like, hit subscribe, and I will see you again next time.